the cog screen. Oh, there you go. Do you want to try that uh, mid -reese? Okay, so live stream's up and running anyway. Roger. I think he's gone. Without music. Perhaps he's gone to go and experiment in a different server to get his sound sorted yeah. out. Very oh. difficult to spot this tiny little runway from the air. Well, you're not having to put that thing on it, are you? It's a DC-3, you know? <laughs> oh, I can see it. You're a bit lower now. It's about to... Oh, I was going to say the DC-3 has just lost his wingtip in my propeller. <laughs> Um, well, this evening I'm going to try out the Texan from Microsoft. I know it's a bit basic and whatever, but it should be fun. Is that a free one? No, it's about eight pounds. Ah. I was getting itchy because there'd been no new aeroplanes for ages. <laughs> What Texans that one, uh, Jonathan? The old one or the new one? The old one. Yeah, I've got it. No, it's good. I like it. No, it's good. good. It's all geared down, Joe. Intentionally. Uh, uh, no, it's up. It's showing it's down. That low, po low fly pass, though. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Well, yeah, it's interesting because when I was on the stream, I could see you in my ear. And yeah. this one, was, you just went by me, you were in a, I think it was a Kenya Airways delivery. It's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Well, have, I, you, got, have you got that livery? I've got the Maya one, I think, as well. Got the red have one? Have you got the, seven, the 737? Uh, oh, yeah, maybe I've got the Airbus, yeah, not the Yeah, he's in the 737. Why. Ah, that's, that'll be the reason why, thank you. Have you not bought that yet? Yeah, I've got it. Got the eight hundred. Yeah, obviously, I don't fly very much. Best you go get that livery so you can see Joe then. Yeah. There's a Phoenix one as well. I've done, which I don't think I've published. I've got the Phoenix, but you know it's strange. I keep going back to the fly by wire one, A three A three twenty. No, I haven't. I've I've flown the the Phoenix, uh, not a lot, but um. And I keep updating the fly-by-wire, but I haven't, haven't gone back to it for probably a year now. Well, however, however long since the Phoenix came out. Yeah. I can't fly that either. Uh, radio check. Yep, can hear you. Yep. I'm Sorry, just... we, can't, we can't hear you, Dave. Try again. <laughs> I've just changed my headset to stop the feedback. Oh, say, well done. Say again. Say again, Cora. Sorry, Dave, what was that? <laughs> well, you couldn't hear dear by then, never gonna. Is that Dave? Let's that go with that to the convoy lark. Uh, uh, that sounds really nice and clear now. Well, I've just, yeah, I've changed over the headset because of the feedback from the, you know, I get on my microphone and if I. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had that that's today, didn't we? Lovely quality. Yeah, so keep that. So not only was it you feeding back, it was us feeding back. <laughs> we could we could speak, and then a couple of seconds later, we could hear what we'd said. Said. You took that word right out of my mouth. Mouth. Here, Patrick, was this about Fabio uh, learning to do ATC? Correct. He'll be very good at it. It's about time, I think. I, I, well, I would imagine he'd be good, but will he blow his top with, with poor old uh, Keith? <laughs> no, he's been very, very patient with Keith. He's spent a lot of time personally with Keith, so I think he'll be understanding. Yeah, well, Keith was excellent uh, last Thursday, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He so. was perfect, don't he? He did the flight proper. Yep. Next week will be the same, but you know, you know what he's like. Well, he had a go at me for making him fly into a mountain. 
fact that he turned the wrong way. <laughs> Besides the bump. <laughs> oh, it's always your fault, yeah. Nothing to do with your vector then, Pat. <laughs> Turn left 090, so he turned right 270. Whoops. Uh, it was never going to end well. Five <laughs> minutes to go. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Just going to orbit the airfield watching the aircraft spawning in. There's quite a few already. There's an awful lot of twinkling lights. Looks like Christmas. I've been to Skeg... Oh, sorry, I can't even say it. Skegness once. There was lots of chip uh, shops along the seafront. <laughs> uh, do you know what I was about to say? The, the promenade is quite good. Yeah, I think I went just before it started to modernise, so there were still a lot of the old two-penny arcades and things like that. Yeah, it was 70s when I was there. And I was meaning to look on the map to see where um, Bickershaw is in relation to, because I went to a... Um, not a concert, what do they call them? Outdoor event. Rave. No. Festival. festival. <laughs> I went to a festival at um, Bickershaw and <laughs> Lincoln Folk Festival. I went to as well. I saw James Taylor there. I was going to say, Lee, you can tell if it's Patrick driving past because you can hear the. Mm -ch -mm -ch -mm -ch -mm -ch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Along with a kilowatt subwoofer in the back of your car. Or is this his son kicking the boot? <laughs> <laughs> No, you went to a folk festival, sorry. Yeah, I used to do that still, I think. So I went to Lincoln Folk Festival and Bickershaw was in Lincolnshire as well, isn't it? I can't remember. I often fancied going, there's a thing called the, the Lamb Ale Festival that I've often wanted to go to, but I was going to go with my late father-in-law, but then he passed away, so the kind of the plan went out of the window. Ah, well, you should still go. Well, have a drink on him. <laughs> it's a good oh, yeah. excuse. <laughs> yeah, well, me and the better half uh, volunteer at uh, festivals, uh, folk festivals, so that's uh, really good. Did you say folk festivals, Joe? Roger. So when you say folk, do you mean things like Steel Ice Man and... Bevel? Yeah, Kate Rusby. They've got the Warwick. Oh, Kate Rusby's like amazing. That. Yeah, we'll actually put some videos to her music when we're all stuck inside. Yeah, some, oh, I, can't, I can't, sorry, go on. Um, I can't see anybody um, in flight conditions. The off group only is sort of greyed and I can't select all players. What's happening? Oh dear. Uh, is this before you've launched into the sim? So you're already in the aeroplane? Probably. John yeah, you'd have to go back to main menu. Okay, thank you. Make sure you're on all players before you go into the aeroplane, otherwise it'll all be greyed out. Apologies for the weak turbulence. <laughs> I can see a 737 shooting along the flight line. <laughs> Did you see that there's an A319 available for flight sim? Apparently it's rubbish. Yeah, I did wonder, because I hadn't seen any decent reviews of it. I wondered if it was just a fork of the A320 with different, you know, 3D shapes. I don't think it's that good. I'm trying to remember where I read something about it, one of the forums, and it was strongly recommended not to buy. Okay. But if you want to do a review on it, of course. Well, I have taken a hit for the team once or twice with going and buying things just to do the video. You're going to get the Embraer, because that's nowhere near. Yeah, that's Alpha, isn't it? That's embarrassing that they've released it, to be honest. Who yeah, makes I that? Agree. Um, I forget the name of the developer. Oh, it's not Peel there, is it? No. 
but the a couple of the more significant YouTubers have actually, I thought they were kind of being a bit slanderous to begin with, but they've started to lose their rag a bit because obviously they're going and buying all these airplanes to record to review them. And a lot of them are literally alpha level, you know, they're just about ready to to run at all. And all the avionics are missing and Yeah. And they're seeing it more and more often. I'm waiting for the updates to Captain Sim, but they don't seem to be coming. Right, we're coming up to eight o'clock, so I guess we're gonna head out on the first leg. Is Peter online that organised the flight? Yes, I'm here, Jonathan. There we go then. you you can take over the Maitre D <laughs> for the evening. What? Um So first leg, two eight nine degrees, twenty six nautical miles over to uh, Wickenby. So take off on the two one anyway. I'll get up and just do some more bits. So two eight nine the degrees. Is, the wind is two zero zero five five knots. Eight o'clock in the morning is looking very nice. A little information about Wickenby. Only the top half of the uh, airfield is in use. Uh, just the X part of the two runways. A uh, road cut the airfield in half. So uh, the bottom half uh, is gone. Oh no. I just want to say another thank you, Peter, for putting this together and welcome to Virtual Flight Online to the Group Flights. It's really good to have you and another person contributing. It's fantastic. Got another one now. Um, that one that I talked to you about before, the, uh, the uh, Cape Cod one, uh, that's got a bit of a problem because when you get on the mainland at Cape Cod, it's just flat and forest. <laughs> the sea bit's okay, but the inland is just boring. They probably decided that nobody goes there, so they wouldn't model it. Or they couldn't get the um, permission for it. Yeah, that's quite possible. Anyway, shall we be off? Yep, I've set off in the right direction, hopefully. Oh, this is a bit of a tip for everybody. So I've gone and bought this Texan. It flies extremely easily, and at 50% throttle, it flies at 120 knots on the button. <laughs> what? Does a real Texan do that? I don't know, but this one does, so that makes my job very easy for a group flight. <laughs> is that one of the ones from the Reno packs? Yeah. Of course, half the reason it's going so slowly is because I left the wheels down. You're very quiet. Is that any better? Yep. Too loud. There was a day, there was a day probably 30 years ago at Gatwick, they did a fly past of Texans. And I think there were six of them. And oh, Gary Newman was flying one. As in um, our friends elected. Yeah, mate, mine was in Hello, guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, flying. hello. Yeah, hello, this is David from Sweden. I'm flying in the caravan, the black and white one. Oh, great to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you very, yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's going to be very interesting. Thank you, and very fun. You say it's black and white. It might be black and white to you. It depends if it's um, standard livery or not. I think it's a standard delivery. Yes. Oh, in that case, we should be able to see you, hopefully. I, what, what is your name within the sim? Oh, they're just on about your Xbox names, because on the labels within the simulator, if people have labels on, they can obviously see each other. I have, a le I have the, uh, the tail number on, the Delta Mike Zoom. I don't know if you can see that. 
No, if you see your tag, your name tag, what's your name tag? You know your Xbox name that appears in the top right when you press pause? Because that's what other people will see as a label on your aeroplane if they have labels switched on. Okay, I didn't know that. I, uh, you need to press the talk. It doesn't matter. It's just um, just for interest for people if they wanted to search you out and fly on your wing. Yeah, I thought I thought I had enabled. Uh, I know it's not not something you have to do. It's just that if if you don't know your Xbox name, then other people won't know whose name to go and find in the sky. Ah, okay, I see, Java. Thank you. Are we all wearing transmitter tonight, or? No. Oh, I have yeah. a few planes on there. Yeah. I, had, I had a problem with little nap up earlier, I wasn't showing up as the yellow and I wasn't getting it right. Oh, that, while I was thinking of it, Jonathan, I couldn't get eight cars to work either, so I'm uh, doing a flight, so I'll try again tomorrow anyway. Your FSUIPC turned on. Yeah. A few people have had issues with FSUIPC not launching itself. Uh, might Maybe. have been what it was then. It, it could have well been that. I'll try again tomorrow. Mine doesn't. I have to launch it separately. Yeah, it, uh, clicking on the boot up button, it just nothing happened, that's all. The message I got the other night was um, you must be at the correct. Departure. Yeah, that means FSUIPC isn't running. <laughs> so I've learned. I must yeah, say that I... this this is so amazing to see how incredible, well made these simulations are. <laughs> we say that every week. What's your first name? My, my name is David. Oh, another David. There's about six of us. There's <laughs> <laughs> common as much. Oh, that's a good one, David. Hello, David, 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 David. Yeah, it's <laughs> a common that? thing, though. If you've not flown online multiplayer before, once you see a big group like this, it is great fun. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, and, and the visuals. Yeah. Who's right at the front in a twin jet? Uh, I'm at 1,600 feet in the Texan. I guess if you haven't got it, I might appear as something uh, else. I see a white 737 or whatever. Are you guys flying at a certain altitude? Or no, we're just... Okay, I haven't done the talky bit, have I? So for all of those that have never done a group flight with us, we tend to stay at about 120 knots along the legs. And if we do get strung out at all, we do circuits at the next airfield, basically, to wait for the group, so we, so we stay mostly together throughout the route and we will stop at a halfway point which is marked in the notes for a five or ten minute break to go make a cup of tea or whatever comfort break so I think I'll go and look at the notes to find out where the halfway is unless Peter can remember yeah I can it's Camp Hill and uh, while I'm saying it is best approach from the south okay so at the moment we're on our way to Wickenby Jonathan, I'm still in trouble. I've gone right out of the sim, reloaded it, and the uh, cannot select all players. It's greyed out. Ah, but did you select all players before you came back in? You've you got to be right, in the right at the very beginning. Yeah. Yes. So when you were in the um, planning the flight, you know, choosing your airfield. Yes. That's right. You went into flight conditions. Before I've done anything, I've gone to flight conditions. And, and you can't select it. Out. That's really odd. Um, I would Can say... I reboot of your PC? Yeah, reboot job, that is. And then load in at the next airfield. Okay, I'll catch you up. Okay. Cheers. We'll have a coffee ready for you, Alice. Uh, is there a coffee okay. shop there? Oh, I'm bound to be one, I'm sure. Well, have if you not I'm done a recce, Ellis? You normally go ahead. No, not yet. No, no, I've been away. I, I, 
the last couple of weeks I've been getting up early and having to drive back home to do this. I was out fishing yesterday, got a good haul too. Sorry. <laughs> having to get up early and drive back home, I just wondered what you were doing the night before. He was empty in his bucket of water or all the rain they're getting. But yeah, flight sim has been a bit unstable today for me at least because um, I loaded in earlier, got an aeroplane ready to do a flight, went to pull away and the wheel brakes were stuck on and I couldn't release them. <laughs> I had to restart the sim and then it behaved itself. Hmm. Yeah, and the controls messed up for me today in the sim as well. Uh, all the program buttons I had uh, were making very strange uh, inputs to the aircraft, so I had to restart the sim. Yeah, it's if in doubt, turn it off and on again. <laughs> yeah. Joe, are you Oracle on... Um, yes, sir, I am indeed. More orifices. <laughs> no, I've got me out of orifice sign on. I suppose I ought to try some aerobatics, seeing as I'm in this Texan. I hope you're not going to be a cowboy. Weather at eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, sorry, the sunrise and everything looks amazing. Hey, you want to see all the little dots I can see from up here? How is it? Can can each and every one have their own weather and time? Are they can. Different? Yes, if you have your sim set to all players, that basically means each individual person can set their sim up however they like, but you can still see each other. Okay, yeah. I've got to say, it's very green for January. I've got real weather on. What time have you got, Pat? Uh, do you know what? I have no idea. Hang on. No, oh, 1436. Put it on after 8 o'clock. Put it on about quarter past 8 in the morning. Lovely. You notice the days are getting longer. Yep. That's jolly pretty. Nice shadows. Nice night. Can you imagine what ATC would think, or the, the poor person in the control tower at the next airfield seeing the us lot coming? Well, yeah, there's, a bunch of there's a bunch of amateurs coming. I'm going for a meal break. Have we agreed on a runway? There'd be a lot of uh, <laughs> instructions, shall we say. This is a video. I'm going three. How many are we? Wind is 2-1-0 at 9 knots. So 2-1 or 1-5. 2-1 looks easy, doesn't it? There's a group of Bonanza owners in the U.S. that gets together to fly to Oshkosh every year. They posted a video this year. There were 109 of them. Oh, my word. Oh, oh lordy. <laughs> I'm surprised they're allowed to do it. I know Oshkosh is a, a major thing, but um, I'm surprised they're allowed to go as a group. Do they have a pre-designated two or three hours in which they arrive? I don't know. I've watched some of the videos of the arrivals at Oshkosh. It's hilarious and terrifying. Yeah. And it, there's no call signs. It's, um, it's things like Texan land now. Cherokee behind the Cherokee rock your wings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> land after all the time. Yeah, because it's not a controlled airspace, is it? It's like best yeah. efforts of... Yeah, it's advisory, isn't it? Yeah. Check the live view for all the uh, Christmas tree lights, chaps.
can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can see at least twenty aircraft. How are you doing that? Are you counting the lights and dividing by two? Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, oh dear get, me. Get the wheels and divide by three. There's, there's a load, a load behind me as well. Did we say runway two one? Well, oh, there's Bert. Bert's on approach. Get down a bit. One of the things I like about this sim is the way the sun reflects off the spinning prop. Oh, set my time to evening. Now I can see all the lights behind me. Oh, pylon saved. guys on autopilot as well? Nope, hand flying. Yeah. Oh. Nope, don't have an autopilot. Yeah, very few fly uh, autopilot on a Sunday. Well, when I step away to the fridge. <laughs> yeah, that's a good excuse. <laughs> yep, gurgle, gurgle. Yep. Well, I thought I'd just do a little circle at the end of the runway and come in, but there's about 20 or aircraft landing. I was going to say, I'm just watching them come in. It's fantastic watching the lights coming in. Yeah. Must be getting near a record 36 or online tonight. Well, on Discord, on, you mean? Uh, yeah, on Discord. On Discord? Yeah, Discord. There's usually more in the air, though. You reckon you can make runway 2-1 from there, Joe? <laughs> Could be a bit tree. Say runway 15 is quite a lot longer, isn't it? Or... Well, it's only a touch and go. You only need a little tiny bit. Well, somebody just put their plane in the ground. A few people going the wrong way. Not that there's a right <laughs> yeah, there's way. There's hundreds of them. Uh, it's like the woman that phoned her husband and uh, said, be careful dear, I've just heard on the radio there's somebody going the wrong way on the motorway. It's somebody, there's hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 266 degrees over to Scampton, which is only a couple of miles away. Yeah, they all look like fireflies on my display. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Just for the... Just oh, I missed the touch. I couldn't get it down. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to go and turn labels on. You won't it's be able to see... It's not good for frame rate to have all the labels. <laughs> no, it ain't that. You just can't see the airport. <laughs> was, that, was that Emmanuel? Good evening. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Bonsoir. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that link, Emmanuel, with all your uh, uh, textures, because I went and downloaded the lot to make sure I got them all. Took me about an hour and a half. <laughs> well, if anybody wants um, textures for the A310, Fabio has done loads and loads and loads. And they are excellent. He comes on with a new one every week, doesn't he, on uh, my app? Yeah, well, I, I went and downloaded every single A310 
livery that he's done. I think he's going to be using one of them. And he was using... I can't remember what it was. I remember you okay. saying it was one that you had that one. Oh, it's one that comes from any bills. He's trying to catch you out, so... Yeah, then I wonder why I've got no space on my PC. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how much space a delivery takes. It's not all that much. It depends on the the level of detail of the, the resolution you use. Uh, Some people eight, are getting really crazy, so it can be quite quite big, especially with interior. I think the PMDG ones are massive because it takes ages to download theirs, and that's their their uh, uh, where they download them from is uh, restricted. I don't know. I always think it's quite quick using the operation centre. Well, yeah, but I mean, each individual livery takes about a good 20 seconds to download, which I think is <laughs> slow. Probably longer than 20 seconds, anyway. So, are we going runway 22 at Scampton, yeah? Yep. Still here, it'll be going soon. I've neglected to raise the gear. I guess that's not as important as neglecting to lower it, is it? Yeah, well, you can get away with it once if you do one of those. <laughs> For those of you who are in VR, I don't know if you have tested, there is a guy who did uh, an interface between Little Nav Map and uh, MSFS. So you have a native panel directly with Little Nav Map that is uh, clickable in uh, in VR. It's a really nice thing. Where where did you get that? Uh, I think it was on flight sim dot two. I need to, to recheck the the thing. But you then you just get um, a single button in the uh, the button list in uh, in MSFS, and it displays uh, like a panel. You can position wherever you want. Uh, you can zoom out. Zoom. You just need to have little Namap uh, working in the background, and it's compatible with transmitter. So <laughs> it works. What is called, Emmanuel? Do you know what it is called? Uh, I'll have to double check the mid flight pose. Yeah, right out, no rush. Maybe something like little nav map VFR. You just need to program uh, or just to, to give the. Basically, it's using little nav map as a web server. So you just need to give a, a few inputs uh, which address, which file you're using. But it's uh, pretty easy to, to set up. It's interesting. I'll tell you what, the ATC in this airport is rubbish, he's letting everything land and do whatever they want. <laughs> they are on strike. Ah. Well, now Everybody we've else is. Now we've all flown in formation and uh, landed at Scampton and we all want to be red arrows. Are you talking about forming a big wing? <laughs> is this a military outfit? Theoretic? It is. Yeah, it's a very historic one. Uh, it's also the home of the British Red Arrows, the aerobatic team. W w it, it is for the next month or so, then they move. Once you doing a quick change, Pat? They've been here some years, haven't they? Yeah, they came the from change. Kemble, I think. Keep yeah, I remember them being at Kemble. So I used to drive past there quite often. But it's also the airfield where they launched the dam busters way from. I believe they were at Lynham for a period as well. Okay, next airfield, 300 degrees, 19 miles, over to Doncaster Sheffield airfield. Yeah, Doncaster Sheffield of blessed memory, ever. sadly it's uh, closing down. Is that Robin? Yeah. Hood? Yeah, it always, um, they opened it, what, 10, 15 years ago, and they called it Robin Hood Airport. I thought, oh dear me, honestly. <laughs> Might as well call a place Mickey Mouse Airport or something like that. 
You see the nuclear plant you have on the on the left? I see four chimneys, like nuclear plant. On the left, you've got uh, Cotton Power Station, and I've forgotten the name of the uh, <laughs> the one in front of it. There used to be three, but uh, the uh, third one, the southern one, has been demolished. Yeah, I haven't got the um, the VFR add-on that puts all the chimneys in. <laughs> I've, I really need to put that back in. In that but case, you've got. got in that case, you've got some large drums. <laughs> yeah, it's very good with the chimneys and the steam coming out. Then it looks very good. What happened to my weather? Suddenly got a load of clouds. <coughs> I do like some of the usernames I see in the sky around us. There's one to beam up. That's a good one. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Fantastic. Bad news, Jonathan. I rebooted, still the same. Uh, the only thing I can... It is strange. Um, Windows did an update just before I... When I first came on, it said, uh, you know, waiting for an update. So I shut everything down, did the update. This is the result. I don't know so, what's going on. So all player... Ah, so one thing to try then is in the top corner of Flight Sim, try logging off and logging on again. You know, okay. you know that you can go offline. Yes, yes. The other thing to try would be t the actual Xbox app itself to sign out of that and sign back in. I've had that cause trouble in the past. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it now. I'll fly the route <laughs> okay. on my own. Won't see anybody. Well, it's live on. Um, YouTube, so you can see where we are. So we're halfway at the moment between. Um, I, yeah. can, I can see everybody in a little nav map. Ah, oh, perfect. I just, I just can't see them in the sim. Yeah. Yeah, so the trick to try, which again is another restart, unfortunately, would be to go into the Xbox app if all else fails and sign out and sign back in again. Okay. I'll I think try that it's something to do with licenses for the online service. I got asked about a week ago to re. Uh, redo that license you know and join xbox yeah to re-sign in yeah okay. the towers have steam coming out of them shouldn't dirty things they should stop doing that general <laughs> options <laughs> A couple of months ago, in real life, I made the mistake of flying right over those those cooling towers. Oh dear! And uh, there was an enormous yeah, there was an enormous bang, and we went up 500 feet. <laughs> you won't do that again, will you? No. <laughs> was that uh, the bang? Was the altimeter couldn't keep up? <laughs> <laughs> on my live on my live stream, you can see the cooling towers. If you haven't got it on your the one to try is Ferry Bridge up in Yorkshire. There's quite a few cooling towers there. Well, I've done the uh, ICI cooling towers when they were when they were working in the Tomahawk. That was quite interesting. Here, I spread lime at the one oh, in did Oh, here we go. <laughs> no, I was spreading lime in the fields while they were building it. How many years ago was that? They've knocked it all down now. Do people still spread lime? Yeah. And funny enough, I went for a meal in uh, Falmouth about two, three years ago. And there was people sat on the same table. We got chatting and he actually spread lime, which no. I've, got, I've got a video of across the valley from where I live. And uh, I put it on, on uh, Facebook several years ago, that little bit of video. 
And it, this was the bloke that was driving that slime spreader. <laughs> it's a small no. world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, driving a lime spreader is better than driving a shit spreader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I met somebody that drove through Bryce Norton with one actually still red running. They hadn't turned it on. And they went past an open top car with it on. <laughs> yeah, and the shop. Yeah, it's, it sprayed the shop and the car that was parked outside. Didn't they, didn't they do Downing Street with a much better one time? Yeah, that but that was probably on purpose. <laughs> before they put the railings up to keep them out. <laughs> That's why they put the railings up. There's thousands of these cooling towers. We've got chimneys now as well with smoke or steam coming out. There's somebody flying straight through one. Ah, that was um, Linden flying through the cooling towers in front of me. So are we going 2-0 or 0-2 at Doncaster? I've got 2-0. Okay, 2-0 then. Two zero zero ten knots. Of course, Doncaster used to be um, Finning, RAF Finningley, where they used to have the old V bombers. Uh, the Vulcans were all uh, stationed here years well, ago. Well, X five five eight was um, Doncaster, wasn't it? Yeah, they saved the Vulcan one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Has anybody seen the YouTube video about the Vulcan that crashed over on the East Coast? No. It's oh, it's familiar. It's fascinating. It was. It's been retold by uh, somebody who was a schoolboy at the time. Yes, yes, yes. Wasn't that round here? Oh uh, yeah, but it would be over on the East Coast, obviously somewhere. Yeah, he, it, it flew. Well, we can become sounds familiar. Because the um, the the crew ejected, they were they were put in the aeroplane to go out to sea. They ejected, and it flew in a great big arc, because aeroplanes are want to do when they've got nobody in control, and crashed about. Well, it crashed in a, an area of open ground in between housing estates, which was just like miraculous. But it had an engine fire, didn't? It? Uh, yeah, yeah, it which slowly to took the airframe to pieces as they were flying. Yeah. What about the plane crash in Nepal today then? Uh, I've seen, I haven't seen anything detailed about it, I've seen the, the, the headline. Yeah. It was, a, it was a classic stall and spin accident, he was going yeah. far too slowly and the wing dropped and he just spun in. Yeah, yeah there's somebody's mobile phone footage and you see the left wing drop. I haven't seen nothing of it yet, but uh, I heard it on the car radio, so I thought, oh dear. That's well, one of the air... It, it, in Nepal. It's one of the airports that, on my air we've flown in and out of, I believe. And we, yeah, it's uh, Yeah. Uh, I believe we have. Well, Kathmandu it left. It went from Kathmandu. And I can't remember where it crashed. I saw Blanco Lirio had a video posted just shortly before um, this flight started, so I'll be watching that when uh, when we're done here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he's quite good, isn't he? Juan one, one Brown? Juan Brown, yes. He's actually a pilot, isn't he? Yes, he is. Another guy as well that does those investigations. Oh, yeah, the other guy's mentor. Dan Ryder. He's a little rougher around the edges. Yeah, I quite like him. He's um, down to earth, isn't he? I think the best one he does investigations that I found was that. Is it Pilot Mentor? I think he's called. Yeah. He goes into extreme detail, but it tends to be historic stuff he looks at. So, what sim does he use? 
don't think he does. He's a real pilot, and he goes and looks at... He does restage them, but I think he might be using X-Plane for the restaged, yeah. you know, showing what happened to the the body of the aircraft. He uses whatever's available. I, he seems to prefer Microsoft Flight Sim when he can, but he'll use X-Plane if the models aren't there. Yeah, but it's usually just as a visual aid, isn't it? Yeah, the one that he did for the Lauda air crash was terrifying. But yeah, Is that the um, thrust reverse is deploying in line. Yeah, I'm not a nervous flyer at all, but that visual of that plane breaking up is that gives me nightmares. Yeah, I'm not a nervous flyer, but I watch every single disaster solving thing that I can. Like, um, even, what are they called? Air crash investigation. He did uh, one on the Gimli glider, didn't he? That was fantastic. Yeah. I think the terrible thing about the Gimli glider is it could easily happen again. Misreading the kilos of pounds. What is a Gimli oh, glider? Great. Oh, who's, who's the best at telling the story? It was a 767 flying from Montreal to, uh, I'm going to guess Calgary. I'm not positive about that. And because of, um, it was right around where in Canada we changed from the Imperial system to the metric system. Um, the fueling uh, driver missed up, messed up the calculation. And as is always the case, um, there was a secondary factor that the uh, compute the fuel computers on board the plane weren't working so they couldn't cross-check it and uh, they ran out of fuel so Gimli is a, an old Air Force base in Winnipeg uh, by Lake Winnipeg and he uh, that was the only place he could bring it in and he brought it in they, they were actually doing they had a, a drag race day there on the on the on the uh, day that he brought it in, um, but he uh, he brought it in and uh, landed it safely on like with no fuel, uh, no or no propulsion. It was just a Gimli, or sorry, it was just a glider. Yeah, so they they glided it from like thirty thousand feet, didn't they? It was a long, way. long way. Yeah. yeah Wasn't it right. luck? That the, one of the pilots had been an Air Force pilot, so knew about the airbase. I think he was a glider pilot. I think that was the uh, the, uh, the 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 connection between. Uh, right. He knew that he knew of the maneuvers to to, to bring it in. The thing is, they would have uh, SOPs for doing all the fuel checks, wouldn't they? Every half an hour or hour or whatever. Well, they well, do now. And, <laughs> That was the secondary factor. The fuel computer wasn't working, so... I yeah, but the, the tank gauges would still give a direct reading of uh, fuel amount, wouldn't they? You should, you should be dipping your tanks if there's any, anything like that. And I remember that happened quite often. I guess yeah. you have to remember as well, though, that's how the guidebooks get written. <laughs> it's, you know, they have yeah. modifications made in response to things that have happened. Yeah, exactly. Every, cra every crash makes flying safer. Mentor went into detail about it. I can't remember exactly what it was. Something got miscommunicated where the incoming crew didn't know they needed to check the fuel by hand. Yeah, I think the level that was in the plane at the start was different than they thought as well. Yeah, normally with these things, there's about three, four, five, or six different events that have to line up, and for some reason they always do. Swiss cheese, isn't it? Yeah. Blowing up the holes in the Swiss cheese. But there was one in the in the Azores as well, Air Transat. I think they had a fuel leak, and they ran out of fuel and they glided it into the Azores, which you think where the Azores is, that's some feet as well. Wasn't there one that had control damage? Had to fly it with just the power, or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. It just used the oh, power leakage. That's the DC-10. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. It's a little engine. Yeah. It's covering all the hydraulics. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that Air Transat one that had the leak 
their fatal flaw was doing a crossfeed and were checking that they had a leak first. A few years back, I read the book by the uh, the controller at NASA that was in charge of the several of the Apollo missions, and um, that was really, really instructive into the thought processes of figuring out what to check at what point all the time before they'd ever done something before, because a lot of the time they were doing something for the first time. So they were sat there doing blue sky thinking about what could go wrong and the language to use if something happened. Uh oh. <laughs> well, no, it was all that, you know, even down to things like normally it's go or no go when they're getting ready to fly. And once they landed on the moon, they, it was stay or no stay. So there was no miscommunication. That was like that uh, fault they added, wasn't it, with the computer? It, yeah. It, it was only luck that the bloke, one of the blokes at, at the command centre, had it written down what that command was. Well, he was one of the developers. Yeah, and of uh, course he knew what it was. Well, do you know the astronaut Shepard? Yep. Well, he did, he worked out the phrase, and that was, right lads, let's get the flock out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I start to believe you because you got the name right. He uh, got worse his jokes. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Little bit of info. Like the flock they were. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of info here. As you go over Sheffield, if you uh, look over to the right side, you'll see the remains of the runway of uh, Sheffield's inner city short lived airport. Yeah, it was a real shame when that closed. It was doing so well for a while and then just it wasn't worth carrying on. Is that because nobody actually wants to go to Sheffield, least of all my air? Well, I, I spent most of my formative years in Sheffield, so I think I can probably agree with that one. It was because no airline wanted to operate from it. Yeah. I've been there once. <laughs> it, it was an executive airport. It was far too small for, air, you know, for big airliners. Um, it was just for you know executives and stuff like that, and there just weren't enough of those. So where is located the, this old airport? Um, it's pretty much in the middle of Sheffield, which I'm just going over it, over Sheffield at the moment, and I'm just trying to see it. I can't quite make it out, actually. It's here somewhere. Is it the long stretch of grassy, sandy ground? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like a circular building on one end. Yeah, I think I can see it right now. Yeah. Like behind the city. Yeah, it's on the edge. Doesn't help that Sheffield's enormous. Yeah, such a big city, but nobody really wants to go there. Well, it's well, uh, post industrial executive jets, that's the thing. Because people around the world wouldn't know this, but anyone who grew up in the UK, you'll have picked up your knives and forks at school when you were younger, 20, 30 years ago, and they all had Sheffield Steel printed on them, or stamped into them. Yeah, Steel City. The um, One of the local ice hockey teams is called Sheffield Steelers for that reason. Yeah, I imagine across the anywhere in the world there'll be cities that are, you know, have a similar history. Uh, Pittsburgh? Yeah. Bird Steelers. The Full Monty. Yeah. Was that Sheffield? Yeah. Yep. And then Steelworks up in Middlesbrough. Come on, Joe, you should know this one. Sorry, I've just come back, say again. Uh, and there are Steelworks in Middlesbrough, or that oh, yeah. area. Red, Red Cart's been demolished just recently. Red Cart. I, I, I only know that because Chris Rea sung about it, Steel City. So is Camp Hill the halfway point? Uh, yes, that's it. Cool, so it's full stop at Camp Hill, everybody. So anyone who just did a touch and go there. <laughs> oh, 
Hopefully it comes back. <laughs> and it was Lado. from the south, right? Landed in the south. I'm glad I'm last. Uh, are we going yeah. runway 19, are we? Yep, it's, that's good. It's just if you come in over the south, you come in with the uh, dip uh, uh, in front of you. What is that, sweet and sour with chives? <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to get that one. <laughs> Sorry. It's like dipping road, you see that sign sometimes. Oh, lovely. Wish I brought the packet of crisps. Well, we're moving into the Peak District now, which is uh, another of my favourite playgrounds. It's an absolutely lovely area, loads of hills and moors and all that kind of thing. Beautiful countryside. And we may even get to see um, Chatsworth House uh, around here somewhere, I think. Oh, yes. I went potholing. Peak District. I didn't want to. It's the last thing on earth I ever wanted to do. Crap, I yeah. I went on a, a course for work. Anyway, it Did got me do? my my diploma in business studies. Anyway, as a result of doing this, like an outward bound type thing. And part of it was right. We've dropped you in the middle of nowhere. If you want to lift home, you have to get points. And you get points by the whole team going through the pothole. And one of the women refused to do it, so I had to do it twice. And I am really badly claustrophobic. Cracky, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd take my hat off to you for doing that. I, I said to I said to the guy, I I don't think I can do that because I'm claustrophobic. And he said, Well why don't you go down? He said, You'll feel the fresh air. Go down and see what it's like when you get down there. Well by the time I got down to the bottom I thought, well, I haven't got a lot of choice. If I want to get out of this, I've got to go crawling through it on my belly. I must there's no way I there's no way I'd fit. <laughs> No, it, it's tight, and you actually you have to go up a up a. It's like a. It's like somebody's got a pipe and bent it. Yeah. You have to go up a bit, then down a bit, and as you go down, you go into water, and it's freezing cold. I wouldn't but I, get rid of the bends in it. Yeah, I could feel <laughs> the fresh air on my face, which, and I thought it's quicker to go horizontally than it is to go back vertically. Yeah. I haven't had the um, inclination or the opportunity to do it since. I uh, had an MRI scan last week, you know, which is that metal tube you have to go into. Yeah, very similar. Um, yeah, and I said, um, how long will this take? Thinking, that'll be a minute or two and maybe I can stand that. And they said, half an hour. Yeah. I thought, what? I had one about 18 months ago, and it, it, I fell asleep actually. I did, didn't bother me, you know, I wasn't bothered at all. But it's just, I'm quite large, I'll say fat, but uh, I, uh, like that, yeah, I barely fit in it. <laughs> I, they clamped me in to squeeze me through it. <laughs> Well, I'm ashamed to say that I stuck it for 20 minutes and then bugged out because I just couldn't stand it any longer. Did you get funny noises in the headset they put on? Oh, God, it's, the, it's it screeches and groans and crackles yeah. and bangs. It's, oh, it's the most horrible it's doing. experience. I just kept my eyes shut. I didn't want to see what, you know, because you wouldn't have to look at, but I just kept my eyes shut. Yeah, well, it, I'm, not, I'm it, not doing that again in a hurry, I can tell you. I know they won't get my missus in one. She's absolutely petrified of being ordered to get in one. Well, I hope she shall never have to. Well, yeah, that's the way to think about it. So anybody that's wondering where I'm going, I'm just circling to watch you all land before I come in. <laughs> Did you see me crash? Mm, I'm actually, actually trying to find the airport. It's just a stretch of grass. If you watch where so everybody else is going. Can somebody tire back it quick so you can see the runway? <laughs> yeah. 
No runway. It's actually the Derbyshire and Lancashire Gliding Club uh, field. We're not normally allowed in there. Oh, it's just a field, is it? Yeah, it's a coffin-shaped field. That's handy. <laughs> <laughs> so, me getting my hawk in there is a bit ambitious, do you think? Oh, are you and your hawk as well? I am. Oh, good. I just got to get the altitude 1200 feet. I've got my, uh, what's it, set at 1800. I'm only just missing hilltops. <coughs> <coughs> You're using the autopilot again? Yeah, because I am, because I've got it. Use it. <laughs> I'm not using the auto throttle, though. I'm doing that manually. Have you got all the uh, washing out, Pat? No, not yet. What, 154 knots? Is that all I'm doing? Apparently. He's still got his wheels down. You're usually doomed when you get down that speed with the hawk. Full oh, flat, yeah. wheels down. It's been updated recently, hasn't it? I just wonder if that's something fixed. Just guess I'll have to check. Is everybody, is everybody managing to find the field? Because I'm going to follow lights. Oh, people are carrying on. Or oh, somebody's carrying on. I'm just circling back to join the, the queue. Might manage a low approach. Right, I'm going to try and land, but it might be a low. I'm for tea. Oh, what I landed. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> You're flying the wrong way, Joe. Of course. Make a coffee. Just go. Apologies, anybody who's in front of me. I can't slow down. That slowed me down. We come to a nice um, broadside halt. Yeah, I was doing a tight turn at 170 knots and it uh, took a wobbler. Oh, interesting. Like right, time to make a cup of tea. It certainly is. Hope my stewardess will arrive shortly with mine.
Right, back in a moment. Is it, is it only winged gliders here? Is it towed as well? I would imagine both. Is this uh, coming on YouTube? I believe it is, yes. Yeah, th I think Jonathan said something about that. So I, uh, I can look at it afterwards. You can look at it now if you want. Yeah, it stays there forever, doesn't it? So if you just um, do a search on YouTube for Jonathan Beckett. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I believe it'll say streaming now, and I, I can't remember. I think so. Will you make your touchdown speed, Pat? Uh, about what you're doing now. And I might see the little road that goes across. Yeah. Unfortunately, I touched down a little bit before the road. You'll see me on the left. That looks good. Yeah, I'm just starting to get buffeting. How could that aircraft come floating down like that? Is it like. Because it's a helicopter. <laughs> it's quite possible somebody's flying a helicopter. But if you don't have the helicopter, you'll see it as something like a bonanza. Ah. Yeah, Smokey Joe. Oh, I don't think I've got me uh No, I have. All oh, right. Let me off it. And you've just quit smoking. Oh, there's pretty, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, beautiful. I have mine set to clear skies. I think Joe has clear skies. Looking at your screen, Joe, I've got cloud right. or whatever yeah. the real weather is. Well, mine's been bobbing around, so I got rid of the real weather. It doesn't seem to handle particularly well. So the red arrows never fly with real weather. <laughs> yeah, you look very pretty. Oh, you're just a bit too close. Too close? No, no, I'm not. We are going, um, what's the word I want? Opaque. Oh, right. Well, you're not, I'm not, you're not opaque with me. No, I can see on your screen. I can see I can see inside your cockpit through the skin of the airport. That was just reminding me when I was at Apple Pen today, somebody had a piece of video of I think they were French Air Force pilots flying low level. And when I mean low level I mean about five or six feet. Was that Nurag just in the Alps by any chance? I think it was. And it was unbelievable watching this video because one of them it showed you him get a map out and there he is flying at about five or six hundred mile an hour about five foot off the ground reading a map i thought jesus i wouldn't want to be a passenger with him <laughs> if that was me i'd have had a pylon <laughs> you'd probably have his terrain following radar on though no, they were definitely, they were flying it manually. It was too low for terrain following. It was definitely manual. 
Unbelievable flying. You still hear me? See if I can see him in the list. No, he's there. He's actually streaming. You know. Oh yeah. Well, he's alive because he's just changed view. Yes, Lee, it's you I'm talking about. I'm back. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm just looking for the fuel gauge in the Texan. Uh, I think you want to dip it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that in flight then, with difficulty? Um, yeah, I think carefully. you plan carefully and dip it before you leave. I was going to ask you a question, but I forgot what it was. Uh, you're chopping out again. Something seriously wrong with that microphone, maybe. The only way to get it. Wrong selection. Actually. Yes, you're you're breaking up and very loud initial. And then you die off to nothing. Sounds like you're waving it back and forth in front of you. Yeah, that's a good description. Is that a goose? Oh, it's gone. Is it going quack or honk? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I prefer him stuffed. Well, it's funny, I've got a turkey next to me. <laughs> I know a few turkeys. <laughs> Would they happen to be of the jive variety? <coughs> <coughs> right. just had a 70s flashback. You have? Jive turkey? Jive turkey. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm too young. Yeah, me too. The last time, well, we, we, Jonathan was a little kid. We were in America and I discovered if you called somebody a turkey there, then they went absolutely ape. Uh, how did you find that out, and why? <laughs> oh, it was the place we were stopping at, at Bullfrog. It, they uh, sort of explained calling somebody a turkey was about the worst thing you could do. Using clean language, at least. Yeah, not swearing. Or Engli English. Uh, what's the word for... I've forgotten the word. Expletives, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody actually gave my mother a coffee cup because of her job. It said, it is hard to soar with the eagles when you work with turkeys. That was a, a, a bumper sticker we saw, yeah. Yeah, I remember the seeing those. Joe, do you reckon we're going to be able to take off? Oh, yes, I think we can. I think these will get off the ground from here. From here, you went straight uh, across the runway. Yeah, full no, flaps. No, no, no. Is that more? Yeah, yeah, of course we will. Just be full flaps, I want it, and sit on the power. Oh. Yeah, I took off quite easy. Didn't hit any it's trees. Very hawks. Do you want to line up? I don't Press. mean spy hawks. Let's take off. Yeah, where's the runway? It's a piece of grass. Right, pretty. Uh... 
found the problem, Jonathan, I think. Oh, what was it? That Windows update put me offline. Oh. And um, so I, you know, did what you said. I signed out and signed back into Xbox, but still no change. So I went back into the general options, and there it was. I was offline. All the data was offline. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In, uh, I had, I, when I went into my, um, uh, you know, the top right-hand corner, your Microsoft account, yep. it told me I was offline and there were no servers, so that's why I wasn't ah, seeing Ah, there you go. Well, we've only yeah, just got no. to halfway, so you're welcome to join back in. Yes, yeah, now I feel guilty because that happened to me a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> why the hell didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't think of it. <laughs> I've... I didn't think that anybody else would have such a problem. I know one other person who had that. We were all confused by how a Windows update changed Tim settings. Well, obviously, that's what it did, eh? Yeah. I've had yeah, updates right? this like, in the last three weeks. I've had it at least three times where I've had to go into all my settings and put them on hard rather than easy. Every time I've had update, it's put all my settings on easy. So we're just leaving from EGHV if you wanted to join in again, um, Ellis. Camp Hill Airfield, EGHV. That quarry I'm over the top of now is deep. Are you taking off side by side, Pat? Let's take off, Pat. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, are you going to line up alongside? Yes, I'm. Bear with. Did you throw the chicken away? Did you throw the chicken away? Yeah. Why? I thought you picked it clean. No, I hadn't done anything with it. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. All power. You call it. Three, two, one, go. One hundred. There you are. Just. Did you clear it? Yeah. Gear up. Yeah, that was nice. People weren't recording it. Over on our right is uh, Derwent Water, where the uh, dam busters uh, practiced their low level. Uh, over the dams uh, routine before heading for Germany. Ah. Your current airspeed, Pat? Well, I'm trying to slow down so you can catch me up. coming up to 300. Accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. Good detour to the dam. You see how mine's jumping around? No. Uh, my sim has started glitching, I might have to restart mid-flight at some point. Maybe jump in at the next airfield at Crossland, more EGND. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'll be back online in a moment. Good job. Tell you what, I'm just going to check out me. Uh... 
sensitivities. Okay, let me just pause. Uh, no, it's uh, it's fine. Just, the tail just... plane is quivering. Looking at your stream. Oh yeah, it is. Mine is rock steady. Have you done the update? Uh, no. How recent was it? Um, before Christmas, I think. Right. But literally, maybe a month. Yeah, I might have to check then. It is just right, isn't it? Because I, I got an email. Yeah, just, just right, right, yeah. That's a full-time job, trying to keep everything updated. It is, you're right. You do it three a week. <laughs> and then I have to check to see what the last update was to make sure I haven't already done it. Yeah, so if I jump in the cockpit, Pat, if I try and get this level, so I'm just doing 200 knots. You can see it just jumps. Right, I'm doing 200 knots, maybe 210. Hang on. A bit more. So trying to keep it steady flight is very difficult. Mine's rock steady. Well, that's me trying to keep mine steady. Yeah, the hook does bounce a little bit sometimes. Depends what weather you've got. Yeah, it's calm. Got uh, weather turned off. Yeah, I've got real weather. I'm maybe 210, I can't. Yeah, 210. Slowing to 200. Have a look at my screen. Yeah, it's done alright. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're up over the high peak at the moment and it's quite spectacular scenery up here. Something with the jets I found. Have you got <coughs> camera shake switched on in the camera settings? That that makes it wobble. Oh, I don't know. Let me have a look. You know we're way off course, don't you? Uh, we'll see them get back. Camera shake. The RS realistic. If you got that on, here's chromic sometimes. FS realistic. Well, I've, I've uh, sorry it FS. <coughs> yes, yeah, sorry FS. I've got it on. Mine's rock steady. 140, 150. Now. Yeah, well, 150. Mine falls out of the sky. I've got. Mm. Uh, I didn't make a coffee, Jonathan. I got uh, Natalie's favourite drink. Strong bow no, dark dark fruit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you share the screens, do you do it in a certain resolution? You can choose. Does it matter? It depends on your bandwidth, whether you can handle it on your outbound bandwidth. Okay. I'll try it here. Yeah, the, the no, funny thing is, you won't know yourself. Only somebody else watching it will know if it can't keep up, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Put on 30 and frame rate then. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, Joe, I'm doing no more than 180 now, and it's absolutely steady. Yeah, well, I'm just in me settings at the moment. I'll just do sensitivity. And I've got to say, this is the first time I've flown it since... Yep, yeah. Can you keep uh, Discord on top? Um, yes, you can, but as soon as you want to use the keyboard, yeah, you'll have to go and make Flight Sim the focused application again. That's where having multiple screens comes in, I guess. Yeah, having another monitor is just great. Yeah, yeah, I could use yeah, my you, you iPad later. To, you still have to have flight sim in context, though. So if you have any keys assigned to anything in flight sim, they don't work. If you're, for example, if you've clicked on Discord, you have to click back onto your flight sim screen. 
Yeah, I see what you mean. Keep it live, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I could. I see here. I could uh, run the simulator in the Windows mode and then put it side by side. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, that would work. Got well, sod saw, isn't it? I restart the sim, and it's taking ten minutes to restart for some reason. Oh yeah. What is the city here, Leeds? Uh, Huddersfield. Another one of those forget cities. <laughs> oh, to the northeast of Huddersfield, yeah, is Leeds. These were all huge industrial cities in the Victorian era. I think it's somebody in the... I don't know if it's in our group. No, no, it's me. I've just flown over Homefirth, where a TV program with all old codgers <laughs> used to film. What was that going Dave? I probably watched Oh, last night. Last <laughs> I thought you'd all guess that immediate. Here well, I we... come, fellas, in the sleep. <coughs> chasing oh, yeah. you down. Oh, I can see you coming in about 5,000 mile an hour. That's <laughs> me, mate. <laughs> That's normal then, isn't it? on 5G at the moment. Right, Joe, look at my screen. I'm doing 200 knots. Hey, you watching? Nearly. Yeah. It wouldn't have done that before, would it? At that speed? No. Nope. It would have fallen out of the sky. Absolutely rock steady. I forgot to land it. Here's me mate pilot Jason and his Spitfire. He hasn't buzzed anybody today. Not seen him at all today. Yeah, I just spotted his label. Oh, he's not on uh, Little Lab Map, is he? I'm just buzzing him now. Okay, Pat, if you check my live screen. Steady. Yes, I'm still doing 250. Mm, not bad. Yeah. Try it again. The forward stick and back stick. No, it's, uh, it's very kind of uh, very jerky. So that's hands off. Hands off. Yeah. Didn't know he's with us tonight. Better fly like that, Joe. It's steady with your hands off. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's the carbon in space again, isn't it? No, uh, I'm afraid so. Anyway, I'm going to intercept, intercept all these light aircraft. Okay, so will I. Uh, there's 3G. Oops. Hooray! Now I'm wobbling. Just pulled down a, a straight down die. 
three and a half G. Where are you measuring your G? On the G meter. On his G string. I can't read that. <laughs> yeah, you have got a knot in it. <laughs> Six mile a minute. Just learnt some if I press the PA button on my uh, uh, G1000 audio buttons, it locks the autopilot. When I say locks it, don't allow me to alter anything. Turn it off and it works again. The PA button? Yeah. You mean as in public address? Yeah, I don't know why. I had it lit and I lost me uh, autopilot. Surely it stands for piddle about and it stops you piddling about with the buttons. <laughs> that'd be better, better address that. Yeah, that'd be a better label. Or maybe you have the French version, it's Pilot Automatic, PA. <laughs> I to get miles a minute, I'll be with you shortly. Just making nine miles a minute. Lee, you still with us? Hey, firm, I'm here. What happened? Bally ho, old chap. What happened? Well, I saw you restart your sim. Yeah, I crashed. Oh, dear. I stalled and spun in on approach. Yeah, I'm just um, coming up across the moor now. So we're heading towards City Airport at Manchester from the west of Manchester. So we'll fly right over the top of the city to get to it. You put your wheels down, 11. Up some echoes, 8. You're all very well aligned. Four and my Christ, they got twice as many than uh, London Heathrow got. Well, the Hawks nearly home. It was built at Howarden, wasn't it? Anybody know? I think so. Pat, I was a bit late leaving the last airfield. Yeah, I saw you stationary. Well, there was these two jets, and they decided 
to line up and take off together. And I have to wait 10 minutes for the jet turbulence to disappear. No, that's out, out of order, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I don't know who they were. They took, a few, they took a few trees out as well on the way out. Not me. Not me either. <laughs> well, did, you, did you see it? We'll check your undercarriage. We'll check your undercarriage the end of the flight. Oh, I'm not going to lower it. <laughs> it's a bit too cold for that. Well, from where oh. I was, from where I was sitting, it looked quite impressive. I was external behind us. Yeah, that was quite kind of very good. Talking how cold it is, uh, that was cold this morning when I went outside. Colder than it's been for quite a few couple of weeks at least. It's supposed to be getting cold tonight. It was minus uh, 14 here. Oh, oh really? <laughs> it wasn't a minus figure here, but it felt like it. Eat your heart out, I've got nice 25 Celsius. Where? <laughs> Heading your way. Oh, are you flying 150 knots clean? No. 280? Now, ground speed is 250. Yeah, I've just slowed down. I see there's no photogrammetry here in Manchester, which is uh, Britain's third largest city, which is kind of surprising. Oh, mine looks like photogrammetry. Yeah, mine does too. And so does mine. Have you lost your connection? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, mine looks good. Mine looks good all the time. Hello, I'm at EGND. Whereabouts are you? Um. We're coming into EGCB, Echo Golf Charlie Bravo. So we're Thank a few you. miles southwest of you. We're about to see you at the moment, Pat. Um, just going over this canal. Bear with me. I'm over the M602. Just south of the fight line. Manchester Ship Canal. Yep, yeah, what you got here? Yeah. Allied Mills underneath me. Speed. Turn the labels off and I can see where I'm going. There's quite a few of us up there tonight. Current speed pack. Current speed 220. Are you going to be holding that? I can hold that. I can go slower if you want. Whatever you're comfortable with. Well, I'm going to reduce to 200 then. Okay, see you in a minute. My job. Very responsive on the throttle, as far as decreasing speed goes. It must be a bit of a lump aerodynamic here. Yeah. What aircraft? Hawk. Turning due north, Joe. Yeah, we'll just be behind you by then. I got you on the little nav map. Yeah, likewise.
Currently All right, one. I cut up. Currently one four zero knots, Joe. Okay. One or two stages of flaps for that. Zero. Well, you clean at one forty. I'll see if I can uh, match that. Yeah, one fifty now. Yeah, should have a visual in a moment. Only one seventy. Right. I've got some very impressive cooling towers over on my what, nine o'clock nearly. Should be visual with you, but I uh, can't see you at the minute. I can see your lights. Yeah, I'll just put the foot down for a moment. Just going up the M6 now. Yeah, okay. I'm going to turn the labels back on so I can see where everybody else is easily. If you follow the M6 path, I'll uh, do the same. Roger. Two thousand seven hundred feet. Now oh, at seven hundred, that might be the reason why. Yeah, I'm going to be your twelve o'clock high. Eleven o'clock now. Yeah, right here. There I are. Visual. Yeah, currently steady at one seven five. Yeah, I'll jet. Let's see if I'm getting a cockpit. So, what, what runway is everybody using at um, Hardwick Park? No, we've gone past it, Joe. <laughs> Best we go round. Yeah, go on, lead on. Well, leader, turn it right. Wow. You can't break any of the gauges out on the hook. I've never tried, is that a fact? Because yeah, they're not it. digital, I so. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a beaver called uh, Harbour Air, if anyone can see that. Uh, what's your username in Xbox? Because then I'll see the label. Oh, I'm in uh, PC uh, uh, Coffee. Coffee Man. Okay. I'll keep an eye out. You'll have to say hello to Ellis. He's a coffee man as well. Missed out today, guys. Yeah, you did. We were hoping you were going to show us where they all are. But... I had to go and fix my sim. Bill Gates, there's your coffee. 
Right, uh, Joe, I'm going to turn south now to come up behind Lee. Hopefully. Does Lee know this? I'm aware. I went to Blackpool once. I've <laughs> never been. Have I, have I missed anything? I went into Harry Ramsden's for fish and chips, and it was the worst fish and chips I've ever had in my life. Uh, that's not true. It's the best fish and chips in the world, apparently. <laughs> well, if you scrape the grease and fat off them, they might oh. be, but it, uh, we had to go into a cake shop and buy some cakes to take the fat out of our mouths. They were disgusting. been in Harry Ramsden's on Ilkley Moor. They were absolutely, that. that's like a, ho a, a, well, a massive hotel and it, it is huge. And it, were, you, were you wearing a hat? No, I didn't wear a hat. Ilkley Moor bath hat. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it, that was stunning and the fish and chips in there were perfection. But the ones in Blackpool, well, they ought to be taken to court because that where's wasn't. The, where's the original Harry Ramsden? Because there's one in Brighton, which is very, very good. Well, this one's a like as I say, not it's it's on Elkley Moor, I think. I think it's Elkley Moor. It's in that area anyway. Right. Right. On route for the final. I was wondering, can you tell me what server you're flying on? Southeast Asia. And four, thank you. Unfortunately, we're on the final leg this evening, so we're <laughs> heading towards Blackpool, so you may be joining us a little bit late. <laughs> yeah, I just you usually fly in the Southeast server? Uh, yeah, all of our group flights are on the Southeast Asia server, purely because it's a bit quieter than the others. Because of the time of day, everybody that live in that area are not online. Well, not many, anyway. They've got to go to work. <laughs> yeah. That's if they're not on strike, Ellis. <laughs> or retired, <laughs> like me. I talk in fish and chips. Sorry? Where would I find transmitter for a little nav map? Um, Virtualflight.online. Okay, there's a link there. I'll check it out. Thank you. Talking fish and chips. Eat your heart out, guys. I had fish last night for dinner that was only two hours old. Very nice. That must have been Straight very small out. then. What's <laughs> <out of> <laughs> Couldn't have been very big. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't have been very how long. <laughs> so how long it was big. Talk that's how long it took us to get home and wash the boat down and fill it and skin the fish and then cook it. Oh, that's the so best, it, isn't it? It's beautiful. Like when we used to catch mackerel out at sea and then cook that. That was nice. See, I've, well, I've done that. See, we only mackerel. ever used mackerel for bait. You know, it's like no, you eat it's horrible it fresh. Stuff. No, no, it's horrible it's, stuff. It's beautiful if you cook it proper. <laughs> you, I've, you, I've done exactly that, Dave. Caught mackerel, gone home, cooked it, or gone back to where we're saying cooked it, and it's fantastic. I've had mackerel out, or based on the taste we had from that, and it was disgusting. Yeah, you've got to have it like hours old, isn't it? That's the way to eat it. Oh, just gone through some electricity pylons. <laughs> finally, finally, I've just, I've just locked up. So what you we have. call John Gurnard, I think you guys call garfish. You don't eat that, whereas it's a delicacy down here. Garfish, is that what? dogfish? Yeah, it's what what we, call away. we call it Gurnard. It's got those pretty coloured wings. Yeah, it's got big head and no body. Full of spikes. Oh, but yeah. we, get big, we get big ones and they're really tasty. Do you get weaver fish over there, Ellis? Never heard of it. Well, you would you know do? if you stood on one. No. Yeah, they're, they're tiny little things, yeah. like sand, sand watches. I yeah. caught a 
caught a lovely snapper yesterday, 15, 50, 50 centimetres long. The biggest one I've ever caught was 95 centimetres long. You would call them bream? Yeah. It was massive, but it was tough as old boots. That's like uh, you mullet, grey mullet over here. You, I, I, can you tell tell it? I, you, I can give you a really <coughs> good way to cook them and then baste it in certain different exotic oils. And then when you finish doing all that, put it in the microwave for about 10 minutes and then chuck it in the dustbin. The only way to eat grey mullet is to smoke it. Smoked mullet is a delicacy. Hold it up. No, yeah. put it in the dustbin. How about pike? I, All I, that omega-3 oil, it's good for you. <laughs> I ate pike in Canada, and you wouldn't eat it in this country. But the way that, I mean, we, we caught it in this guy's uh, cabin by a lake, so we, we caught all these pike, took them back, he showed us how to fillet them and what have you, and she baked it, and it was absolutely fantastic. Well, it's a funny one, uh, where I used to keep my boat, in the, it's only a little dock, but about, it was about three years ago, it erupted with about a whole shoal of uh, uh, whiting came inside the arbour with the tide, and about a thousand seagulls descended on the arbour. You could not see across there. It was absolute bedlam. Must have been a lot of whiting. They're tiny, aren't they? Oh, there's a, a tower here. Got to yes. check that out. Mm. Oh, well, of course, Blackpool uh, Tower. We seems came up with a overheat message, which I've never had before Ooh. in graphics card. That one. Yeah, we've never had it before. You changed drivers recently? Nope. Black Chains Tower. Yeah, I ran a fly around. I flew over the airport. Now I'm flying down to where the tower is. See if yeah. Ra Harry Ramsden's his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm heading for the tower. Is this the uh, final? It is. Yes, Blackpool is the final destination. So all thanks for the route tonight go to Peter that filed it in Discord. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, yes, thanks, well done, Peter. Peter. Very good. Thank you, Peter. My pleasure. Yeah, cheers, thanks, Peter. If anybody else would like to make a route, a similar route, and in their part of the world that they know well, then you are f welcome to do so. Anybody that's a member of Discord can make events, and we've put instructions in there to help you get started. So, yeah, the more people that do it, the better, really. I'm going to see if I can fly through the tower or take it out. I don't think you can. Try me out. Uh, ILS. It's just coming in. Uh, boom. Oh, I went through it. It didn't take me. Oh, I like of course, yeah, there is ILS, isn't there? There is, and just be careful what you see, because I'm in the tower at the moment. What, Blackpool Tower? I am. Bloody tower. <laughs> That's I'm, on me, I'm on my break though. Oh. What is the frequency for the ILS? 108.15. Sorry, a single voice please. 108.15. <laughs> Thank you. And 275 magnetic. 3 degree light slope. At one. Join the queue for that runway then. Looks like Pat Dave's, Dave's heading off to that fish and chip shop again. Oh, look at <laughs> no, I'm coming round to have a second go at the airport. I've got no uh, air. Uh, no autopilot again, so we've got to land manually. 
Oh, so you're not the only one with uh, bad autopilot since the uh, update. Yeah, since this update, I've having a bit of problem with that. But it was a go flight to Polypot software that I use that just messed me up, I think. They did an update, and I don't think it's very good. The trouble is I can't roll it back because I haven't got a backup of it. This looks like mayhem on the live stream. All of these labels converging on the airfield. I think they're all going around the you tower. Wanna, you want to see where you're going? ATC, you're going to ATC are having a blue fit. <laughs> of the tea break. Yeah, they I just made it dark in the hope of seeing some illuminations. They've all no. gone home. I uh, don't see any label on my plane. Yeah, you won't see You're a label on your own. Well, wheels ain't gone down either. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Do you remember that time we were on the group flight and you c complained that the sim had gone wrong and you couldn't accelerate off the runway? <laughs> you hadn't got your wheels down. <laughs> No, the tower is not illuminated. Are you flying up the course, Patrick? I am. I'm trying to see if the illuminations are on, but there's nothing. Got them down. So we can try and land this time. I'll do an orbit. On down. Runway. Why have I got a green line behind my aeroplane? Look, your smoke on. No, it's on the. Hang on. You're losing hydraulic fluid. You filled up with diesel. <laughs> no, it's on the uh, on the little nav map. Oh, well, I'm looking at you know. on the little nav map, but I can't well, see anything behind you. It's your track, li track line. Oh, I don't want a green line. I've never seen that before. You've got track line uh, on where you've been. No, 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 that should be dotted. That's a dotted line. But this is a straight green line, straight. Currently my five o'clock. I'm sitting here watching all you guys land and I'm scoring you, so you better do a good job. Oh, okay. Put your undercarriage down, Jonathan. It is down. You did make me look, though. <laughs> it didn't look like it. Yeah, it didn't. There's another man in the caravan. I just flew across the approach uh, run, so put people off. Right, I'm flying in a uh, Beaver Harbour Air. I'm uh, buying everyone around. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just give us your credit card details. <laughs> Do you want to pop into Wharton Pass? It's a bit quieter. No, it's alright. This has been our busiest flight in a while, isn't it? Yep. Well, I haven't been on for a, quite a while on um, Sunday. We've I read there were three giveaways somewhere. Yes, VFL 120 report finals number 26. <laughs> <laughs> number 26 to land. Uh, what's the number of the bomb, please? 23. It's 28, isn't it? <laughs> 
whatever runway it is, on the uh, right base. Right base to land. Do I? In a right to an eight. S120 is shortly to become number 25. Why well, I am armed. No, I shouldn't say that, should I? There's a little arm in it. You mean he's armless? <laughs> Usually he's legless. Practice makes perfect. Oh, that's a well illuminated runway. Uh, virtual one two zero is final. Come to it. I want to it. Continue approach. Continuing. I think you need 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock. <laughs> I see one or two airplanes off the ground. Do we get permission to park up out here in the middle of the paddock? <laughs> you don't need permission in England, just do what you like. I've got some quite pretty clouds in my live stream. It's dark. Uh, not, they, not I thought you said you weren't going into Wharton, Pat. Rats! Yes, continue with the turn. It was just so attractive, that runway. That black, that's Blackpool over there, where all the lights are. Oh. <laughs> Wharton is where the TSR2 t was test flown from. Well, based on air speed, Pat, you're going to be number two. Lee is going to be number three. You should be in your visible at two o'clock. Hi. Which localizer? Two eight. Uh, no traffic in sight. Anyone see me? I've got a big HA on my uh, tail. Um, is it a custom livery? Yes. Yeah, then nobody will see that. <laughs> <laughs> unless okay, people, I'll, unless okay, I've got the same one loaded. If you know yes. your username, if I've got la I've got labels on, so if you know your username, I'll see your username. Yeah, Patrick, you are now number two. Lee, you're number three. Really? Number three. My name should be uh, Coffee. Yeah, it's probably somewhere in there. I'll um, it'd be on YouTube, so it's being live streamed anyway. So you'd be able to go back and see if you can see yourself as we were flying around. Yeah, can you see Pat in front of you, Lee? Yeah, he's uh, right off me. Blackpool Tower. Pan, pan, pan. Sure. Oh, bingo. No, this is Pan, Pan, Pan. Pan is that Have you got to shoot? Bingo is when it's time to return. Pan is, uh, I haven't got any left. Well, I thought bingo meant you have no fuel. No, bingo is time to go back, isn't it? Correct. Oh, you, bingo, 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 after bingo comes point of no return. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. So we've got somebody on the live stream chat that's just said that they're, um, uh, let me just get this right, have a friend who can tell us that he worked on the TSR2 back in the day, he's 83, and said that the TSR2 could fly on autopilot at 50 foot. Yeah, it had um, one of the world's first terrain following systems on it. it, but the trouble is that there's several books about this and talks you can see on YouTube, but the, at Cosford I think they've got one of the remaining airframes that shouldn't exist. Um, the reason the TSR2 got cancelled, really, 
was because it became enormously expensive because it just predated the transistor so all of the electronic hardware that they used to build that um terrain following system was all based on analog electronics and it was enormously heavy and an enormously expensive and it overran costs like two or three times over what it should have cost and then of course by the time it was about to go into service much cheaper solutions were around Changing the subject, look at my stream, I've got a rainbow out to sea, it looks brilliant. Oh, my name is DHC2 Barista Flyer. Oh, okay, um, hang on a second, I'm just watching Lee's stream. Yeah, 120 is clearly active. Well, I've done 120, and bingo is an instruction for you to land at the specified runway. Uh, your aircraft is considered to be in a fuel emergency. Oh, it doesn't mean you've won something then. <laughs> no, I thought it, uh, that's house. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, I thought I thought bingo fuel was um, you had to go back, otherwise you wouldn't make it. Uh, the Americans bingo means to divert. Is it? It's the official U.S. Navy at, uh, bingo. What only? You see the rainbow on my stream. Have a look at that. Yes. Stand That's by. my dust. All those slang sayings in Germany only got one, and it's kaput. That yeah, it means it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Snafu. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of orange aeroplanes here. Float, floating otter. Well, I'd had quite a lot of crashes recently, and I updated the GNS 530 to the latest build of it, and the crashes have stopped happening. So tonight I flew with oh, all yeah. of my add-ons installed. And I flew all afternoon with all of the add-ons installed, so upwards of about 60 different aeroplanes. And everything has worked, and been smooth. Now, I know when the GNS 530, the working title one, when it first came out, they did warn everybody that it was a beta and it would cause trouble. But yeah, as of the latest update, it seems to be okay. I've just, I've only got the freebie. Yeah, this is the free one. This is the working title add-on for the 530 to make it have lots of extra functionality. It's in the oh, marketplace. Right. So I've, I've just done an update to the one in the sim. Yeah. Not just yesterday, I think. Where do you get it from, Jonathan? The Marketplace. It's in the Marketplace. Yeah, the, the GNS 530 update is in the Marketplace. It gives you things like the keyboard control to key in waypoints when you're doing a flight plan, for example. Oh, that's brilliant. Would be brilliant, yeah. I'll go and do it now. Okay. So, yeah, so you don't have to twirl the knobs for hours on end to tune in the waypoints. <laughs> exactly. See you next time. Cool, see you soon. Well, so informally, bingo is I'm nearly out of fuel. Okay. Um. So if you were really out of fuel, you would declare an emergency and then bingo. Okay, thank you for this flight. Cool, you're welcome. We'll be back online again next weekend. I'm not sure where we'll be flying yet, because we haven't had any flight plans submitted yet, but if anybody wants to go and organise the event for next week, feel free. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate this. This was great fun. Thank you, everyone. I'm preparing yeah. something, but it will not be for next week. I will have an excuse next week. I'm flying for real. Oh my word! Ooh, yeah, taking a real airplane to pollute the planet and so on. <laughs> <laughs> you could use an electric plane. Uh, not to go where we are going, no. <laughs> yeah, but surely electric just pollutes at a different place. Correct. Or at a different time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The building and the <laughs> recycling and thing. Right. Bingo fuel.
Pass. The amount of fuel <laughs> remaining to safely reach the bingo field. The bingo field was the closest land-based airfield which could be used <coughs> in case the aircraft was unable to land on the aircraft carrier for any reason. Oh, there we are. Yeah, when so you set up the F American definition. Yeah, when you set up the F-18 or any of those in DCS, one of the things you do is set your bingo fuel level. Hmm. And it's a procedural thing, isn't it, bingo? Yep. Yeah. Bizarrely, you can set the bingo to be whatever you want it to be, so I guess they base it depending on how far away the mission's going to take them from the carrier, for example. Yeah. Anyway, Michelle Light came on, is what I was trying to say. Well, if you only said that. <laughs> anyway, does the Hawk have a separate reserve tank? Um, I didn't get a chance to look. I was on finals anyway. On about running out of fuel, I, I don't know if I've told this story before or not. There was a documentary where they were on the flight deck of... Uh, I've forgotten what our version of it is called. The Sentry, you know, the radar aircraft that overflies the yeah the situation the AWAC. AWACS yeah and um, they were talking to the, the flight controller and they were in the middle of this exercise they were vectoring a tornado F3 I think is the air to air version isn't it they were vectoring it to intercept a fake Russian bomber that was coming in over the north eastern side of Europe and they were kind of f factoring into it the range he could get within missile range and then get back without running out of fuel. But they said, of course, in a real situation, that wouldn't be a, a, a concern. They would ditch the airframe. They, all the, the wep you know, their only concern would be to fire every weapon they had and ditch the plane, pilot jumps out. You know, just to get yeah. within range of it. They well, seem to put very little value on the actual airframe. Yes, because the, the pilots are more expensive than the aircraft. That's the right. Idea. But if you if you wipe out three aircraft, you get sacked. <laughs> oh, just three, is it? Yeah. Just ah, three. but what if you were actually instructed to go beyond fuel range to fire? Yeah, it depends whose territory you're heading into. <laughs> exactly, I, I suppose. And whether you want them to be able to get the bits of the aeroplane. Yeah, it yeah, probably gets. They always do retrieve, don't they? Yeah, it probably gets quite complicated, especially if it's got new technology on it that you don't want them having. Well, you've just nosed dive at the end, uh, full throttle, jump in first. Smacks of um, oh, the James Bond movie, whichever one it is, where they go and get a, a nuclear bomb off a, a Vulcan bomber. Is it Vulcan bomber? I don't think I've seen that one. A V bomber. It's an early one. Sean Connery, and the the divers get down there and find that somebody's beaten to it. Oh yes, I've seen. Uh, it's was moon, that is it Moonraker? Was it not a Polaris? Thunderball. It Thunderball. Was Polaris. Polaris Thunderbolt, missiles, yes. wasn't it? I don't know what the missile was, but um, there yeah, was a Polaris missile. Yeah. Yeah, the Vulcan was a few feet underwater. You can see it above. Never say never again. I never say never again. Was the reboot of uh, Thunderball? It's not officially a Bond movie, is it? Never say never it's, again. Yeah, it's not one of the official ones. Yeah, it's a, My friend has got... a way for our Sean Connery to get some money back because it was already Roger Moore at that time. The, um, one of my friends has got a <coughs> box set of Bond movies that's got Never Say Never Again in it. And apparently this box set is now incredibly valuable because they had to recall them and remove that movie from the box set. Oh. And it's got the, the bindings of all of the DVDs match up to make, like, the James Bond logo. So they had to, you know, the new box sets. You can tell if it's that box set, for example, you know, because the picture doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. The Bond people actually own that movie now. They bought it so they could uh, basically bury it. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? And on that note, thank you, chaps, and we'll see you next time. Yep, see you soon. Indeed. See you, see you, see you soon. Bye. Right. Okay, yeah. You got your chopper out? Right. Right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I am. <coughs> <coughs>
<laughs> and on that note, I think I'm going to stop the live stream and call it a week. <laughs> Thanks for the flying. See you soon. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Jonathan, uh, I've got another one. I'll uh, I'll email it to you to have a look at. Okay, that's good. Cool. Anyway, I'll see you all again next week. Okay. Yeah. Same yeah. here. I'm Cheers. pulling the plug. So, okay, bye. bye night, everyone. Bye night.